you are listening to Off Color, a podcast where 1.5 Black people and Jane talk about race and help you learn how to talk about race and racism, hopefully. I'm Rebecca Henderson. I'm the point five. I'm Dr. Gregory Diggs, 1.0. I'm James. And this is Off Color. Guys, I am so excited tonight, and I think that you know why. And it is because we have a very special guest tonight, and her name is Tamara Banks, and she is an Emmy Award winning journalist, mm-hmm. a documentary filmmaker, talk show host, community activist, keynote speaker around social justice issues. And when she's not busy doing those things, <laughs> she's working and reporting in Africa and the Middle East about crimes against humanity mm-hmm. and genocide. And like, basically, she is amazing as hell. And I can't believe she's in my basement, <laughs> getting ready to be on my show. <laughs> and I just want to welcome, just welcome Tamara to Off Color. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so here. much for having me. Yay. I appreciate it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so before I, we get into some of the other stuff, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. So I've seen you on the news. Um, I think it was Channel 2 here Channel in Denver. Channel 2, Fox 31, local news. Local the, news those are the Denver. local stations. Yeah. Uh-huh. But aren't you also um, an international... Right. So I've uh, my work has been on PBS, BBC. I've produced a piece or two for NPR around South Sudan. Um Al Jazeera America, love Al Jazeera America and Al Jazeera. Mm-hmm. So those international networks are the ones that uh, I primarily work for. Mm. Excellent. That's As fantastic. a freelancer. That is fantastic. Um, and then here in Denver, you're a little bit of a hero. Everybody nah. knows you. Yes, you are a, basically like a jewel in the crown of Denver. <laughs> and so that should be acknowledged. You're too kind. No, I'm not. We didn't even even get into it yet. But, <laughs> but Here we go. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hit it. So that's 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 exciting. So what do you think is your the thing you're most proud of to date? That's a tough one. So I, I really am proud of the work and appreciate, I should say, the work that I've been blessed to be able to do in Sudan and South Sudan mm-hmm. around genocide and crimes against humanity. Um, I started getting interested in genocide like why do people just do this kill mm-hmm. off an entire race yeah. so i've been very interested in genocide for decades had the opportunity to uh, meet some folks with uh, the colorado coalition for genocide awareness and action mm. committee um several years ago learned more about the uh, slavery going on in mm. uh, sudan mm-hmm. so um i'm i don't know that i'd say i'm proud i mean of course we're always proud of our work but it just sounds so yeah. braggadocious, but I think, like I said, I'm really honored and, and blessed to be able to report on this topic that no one's really talking about. Now we're recently hearing in uh, off mainstream media about slaves in uh, black slaves in, 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 in Libya. In Libya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so again, why, why are we talking about this today, the 21st century in 2017 going into right. 2018? I would have some opinions about that, but... Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to that soon. I <laughs> yeah. think so. Yeah. I think it's That's, tied together. It is. Huh. So I wanted to talk about something that is um, pretty serious, and I hope you guys are ready for this topic. <sighs> Prince Harry is engaged oh to my Meghan God. Markle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You think that's important? I I listen to NPR first thing in the morning, and then at 7 o'clock, if I'm still home, I'll switch over to ABC News because I'm a Robin uh, Roberts fan. GMA Mm. led with this, not only with the story, but then an analyst afterwards. I'm like, please. So, of course, I switched it to the grown folks station, CBS. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And they led with all of the uh, sexual assault perverts in in, uh, Congress in Hollywood. So Exciting. Now, the reason that... I'm particularly excited about it. I don't, I'm not that interested in the royals and this and that. But Meghan Markle is half black and half white. Yes. 
much like I am half black and mm-hmm. half white. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was like pretty exciting that sure, there, you course. know, that one it's, of my peoples. It's really exciting. And I think it really obviously changes the color, if you will, and the tone of this palace and this elite mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. Uh, in the world. And I think that they are um, not on purpose. Clearly, uh, these folks are in love. But isn't it interesting that in this moment in time, this woman of color and this prince have fallen in love? And it's just the timing couldn't be any better, right? right. When you look across the pond and seeing what's happening in Pennsylvania Avenue yes. in yeah. our own country, yes. they're yeah. like, Wow, that's a contrast, right? Yeah. So to your point, yeah, that is really exciting. And they couldn't be lovelier. Yeah. And it's what is interesting, though, is then some of their... But there's also, like, this blacklash and backlash that Mm -hmm. has been coming up as well with her, where people are saying, like, oh, well, because she identifies as mixed, Mm -hmm. and she doesn't... Isn't that how it happens a Mm -hmm. lot of times? Um, Some of us don't want people to identify as mixed. Right. And I thought it was really because I've been I've been really struggling with that. It's something that's been going on with my own like identity in my life and stuff. But she, people were men acting like she doesn't want to claim her blackness, and I and that's been like this. I feel like that's this almost like this like tired rhetoric that I want to yeah. get rid of when people are saying, "Oh, you're you're not you're saying you're mixed because you don't want to be black." That's not. Right. Why people say that they're mixed, uh, in, at least in my personal experience. And if I say I'm black, oftentimes people will also deny me that. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so who gets to decide what that's, I am? That's like, right. if I, somebody looked at me the other day and they said, so do you identify black? I'm like, it was such an interesting question. I'm like, yeah, because I am. But my dad is black, my mom's French. But to me, growing up in my age group, it was just sort of like Mm -hmm. you subconsciously picked. Mm -hmm. Um, But I still identify as that. Am I still mixed? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I biracial? I find this phenomenon, and I'm not mixed, but there's always this phenomenon to me, and it's coming up this time for the thousandth time, well, people feel like they get to tell other people exactly how to and, and how to identify, and then have expectations around that, and they don't even know people and get offended mm-hmm. and have all kinds of judgments to make. I'm like, mm-hmm. is that an American thing or something? Because what gives us the right to even? I mean, I think we can have opinions about how each other, Mm -hmm. you know, do things and identify, but we feel like we can impose our judgment and our opinion on other people, and that's just a fascinating thing. It's mind blowing to me. You know, how dare somebody tell me how I can, or if I say that uh, I'm a woman of color or that I'm an African American woman, you're denying your mother's heritage. Uh, No, I'm not. Um, because we come in all rainbows, especially and if we you're have. down in Louisiana. Yes. You know, there's all yes. yeah, you yeah. know, different shades of, of folks. So, um, yeah, that's that's my story. <laughs> so, a thing about <laughs> that. Pick. Here's something else I want to say that I think with this <clears throat> phenomenon, it's like Prince Harry has come to the defense mm-hmm. of her and her identity, and that's a fascinating thing to watch. Not because I know who Prince Harry is or was, but you know, it wasn't too long ago that he was like wearing Nazi uniforms and. Oh my God, I completely forgot that. And I'm like, I'm like, (laughs) wow. And and I don't have a judgment about it. But I'm like, wow, that's an interesting. You're phenomenon. right. I'm like, you've come a long way. Baby. I had forgotten about that. Yeah, (laughs) me too. And he's like stepping out and saying, hey, you need to. Yeah. Treat my yeah. partner with respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, well, all right. Yeah, <laughs> that that's a growth spurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I forgot about that too. Yeah. So you know, a, a little bit of a small parallel story in America. If you don't, if you haven't paid attention, there's a little bit of um, upset, just a little bit, of um, Barack Obama's daughter dating a uh, young white man. Mm. Do you tell? Yeah. Mm. Kissing and everything. She's been, you know. Yeah. And apparently he is from the UK, Ah. I think. And went to the private 
schools and yeah. you know and that he was the head boy of one of the private head schools. boy oh my God, you know? Harry Potter and, and, <laughs> yeah yeah and um and so there's been a there's been some um it, it wasn't a big deal big deal yeah um because she's what first year in college yeah I mean, yeah you know it's not like they're engaged or something but um but that's I think those kinds of things there were articles written about you know, what's the likelihood that she would pair with an African-American, mm-hmm. you know, based on her stature, based exactly. on, you know, and, and people have opinions mm-hmm. about that. And that just always fascinates me. Not necessarily that people have opinions, because I think we all have opinions, but it's just so fascinating that we feel like we're entitled mm-hmm. to, like, make a judgment about choices That's people right. we don't even know. To project that Make, opinion yeah. onto somebody as if it, they should own it, that opinion yeah, and on them. I'm not going to buy there and I'm not going to do this. Yeah. It's like, wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> You've got that deep feelings about people you don't even know? Which really makes me wonder <laughs> what's in your closet that you're just trying to put all this attention on somebody else yeah. when... You know what? Do you, what are you trying to hide? Like, why is that an issue? Is for? It's issue? like the LGBTQ yeah. community. Same like, thing. I love who you love, and yeah. if that's a big deal for you, what does that really say about your? Oh, I think uh, we all know confidence in your sexuality, <laughs> right? The so craziest that you ones say that, that hate them the most are one hundred percent every time always gay. Because yep. I never understand. So, what is the threat? Yeah. It's baffling. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's not that baffling. People. It's not that baffling. Once, yeah. People are terrible. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> On that up note. No, well, I mean, this is some, this is some, speaking of terrible people. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So today I was just having my lunch, you know, and um, scrolling through the old Facebook and I just got to a quick glimpse of Donald Trump um, <sighs> greeting the Navajo code talkers. Mm-hmm. And he just had to go there. Wow. Well, you know. Did, did anybody see that? No. I, I heard, heard it. About that. I, I heard have it. been. I Buried in work all yeah. day today. Oh, would you like us Please. to tell you what happened? Yes, I heard. I heard all it. right, try to try to <laughs> not throw up. Imagine this. Okay, <laughs> that's what happened to me. I was eating. I felt sick. No, he. <laughs> they were having an event to honor the the Navajo Code Talkers World War II. You know, they broke the code. I think people are familiar with that. Mm-hmm. And if they're not, Google it later. If you don't know what we're talking about, and or go to the library. Hey, um, and so. He said, oh, you guys are very special people. You were here before us. We have someone here, too, who's here a long time ago and in the Senate, and her name is Pocahontas. <gasps> uh-uh. Pope, yes, he did. You guys, I just broke news to yeah. Tamara Banks, y'all. I just broke <laughs> news We got Tamara the scoop. Banks. We got the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. And so then, and then like trailed off with one of those condescending Trumpian like, but 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 I like you're a good guy. You're a good one. But you're one of the good ones. Yeah. Good for, no, that really happened. And then his delightful press secretary, press secretary mm-hmm. got on and said, and then people were like raising their hands, like, "Hey, why is it okay for the president to say something racist?" And she's like, "That it wasn't. It That's wasn't not racist. a racial and the real slur. problem. The is real- people trying to appropriate, you know, yeah. Native mm-hmm. American." Yeah, Identity. using a lie to become, mm-hmm. to further her career. How yeah. stupid do they think the American people are? It was pretty terrible. And I, I really did, I, I did have like, a, I had like a visceral reaction to it when I saw it. I was just like, like I felt sick. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, he's the president. Mm-hmm. This is. Of our country. It's like just, not yes. some no. country that's still getting on their feet. They're not quite developed yet and they're still growing. No, this is the United States. Yeah. A place of, you would hope, Aspires yes. to be full of and dignity we used to at least and inclusive pretend excellence, at least pretend to be, right? <laughs> you know, well, so. let me tell you, maybe that's a, in some ways, number 45 being in the White House is maybe a, been a good thing because he's yeah. throwing in that, the pretense away. Exactly. It's somebody finally pull the curtain open because all these, how many decades, centuries now have been saying, don't look behind the curtain, don't yeah. look behind the curtain. Hey, we got a black president now, don't look yeah. behind the curtain. Finally, we get somebody who says, yeah, let's take a look back there and see about all this ugliness right. called racism, chauvinism, misogyny, mm-hmm. um, homophobia. Bigotry, all bigotry. of that stuff. Yes. It, and so to me, it's time to like roll up our sleeves, scrub and scrub the ugliness out of the country. This is our opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. But I have one other thing I wanted to, to talk about that... Um, well, hold, hold oh, on. Yes, There's ahead. this one thing that's thematic for me. 
Go ahead. That's been since January amazing to me because I still have people in my extended circle who even when they hear these things, mm. they keep saying, well, wait a minute, explain to me how he's racist. Mm. Or wait a minute, you know, why are you saying that he's sexist? Or wait a minute, why are you saying that he's bigoted? And, you know, I can usually answer everything, but I find that I don't have words. It's like if I have to explain, if, if that's part of the conversation we have to have, I just don't even know how to participate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I don't exactly. want to... But... Yeah, I mean, it's so blatant. I want to help you right now. Yes, you can help me. Potentially. Please help me. Yeah, okay. please help me. So this is something that I feel like I want to be able when to, to have an answer in that mm-hmm. way, to explain it. Like, let's talk about it for a second. If somebody said, say they were just like the press secretary, and they were like, that isn't a racial slur. I don't see that as racist. How could we potentially explain that to her of, of how uh, how it is? I see. I don't know. Okay. Because I think it takes, if, if, people, if people are that blind, some of the stuff they need, they need to know would take like months mm-hmm. to explain to them. It's like, really? I have to explain how, you know, grabbing... A female's private parts is not sexist. Right. I just don't know. I, I'm like, that's just pretty, it's so profound and so deep that I almost don't even want to participate in it. I, mm-hmm. And I, I hear you. My head almost explodes like regularly. I don't know. James, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you have any answers for us? I think it circles back around to what, um, to, to what Gregory and Tamara were saying about uh, trying to tell people what their experience is. The president of the Navajo Nation was in the room, and he said it was offensive. Mm-hmm. So why does Sarah Huckabee Sanders get to tell us it isn't? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, if I if if I'm the 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 receiver of a message, and I say, you know, that was when you said mulatto. I don't think that that really hurts my feelings. I don't want you to say that. I don't understand it. It's just a word. But see, you can't define for me what impacts me mm-hmm. and what it, it hurts mm-hmm. my feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you can't explain that to somebody, you're right. It's going to take some time. But there are tools out there. I mean, yeah. there's even things like saying just that word offends me and hurts me. I don't need to explain to you why. Mm-hmm. Right. Because mm-hmm. it's That's making work me you upset. Need to do. That's yeah. work you need to do. Mm-hmm. Like I can... You know, advocate for myself and right. let you know how I feel about it. Okay, okay. See, you have helped me. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a hard one though because I I often will find myself in those kinds of conversations with people where I'll be like, oh, that's racist, and then they will argue, right? And they'll yeah. be like, well, how is it? And then I'm like, listen, you asked me. I'm telling you, right. That's the answer. And the other thing is, when they ask, "How is it?" Do they really want to know, right. or Nobody is it just really wants to know? Really, a way to to have an argument, right? And just to fight, when instead of really being, what Ma, Mom always said, there's a reason why you have two ears and one mouth. That means you can <laughs> <laughs> listen twice as much as you talk. It's and often t-shirt. people don't like to listen. But it's mm. no accident anyway. It's pure theater. None of it is a mistake. That that entire conversation with the Code Talkers was in front of a portrait of Andrew Jackson. See? Mm, yeah. I, you're not going Great. to tell me that that these are slips of the tongue. Right. That then, that then Huckabee Sanders needs to get up and explain away. Is this a, good point. a distraction? That's a really good point. Is this oh, a distraction? Oh, it's at least that. I think it's a distraction, but I think it's more than a distraction. I think... There's a group of people who are trying to mainstream white nationalism. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's campaigning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's campaigning. Mm -hmm. White nationalism won him the election. That's right. And he's banking on it winning him the next one. That's right. And they have no shame because not only white nationalism, now even like child molestation. Yeah. They Mm -hmm. do not. I'm about to cuss. I'm not going to cuss. But they they do not care. I was about to say something else. Mm -hmm. You know? This they is a, they this do is, not. You can be. swear on the show. I know, but I still got. I still got people. Explicit <laughs> language. Setting, setting an example to young minds that are still being yeah, molded yeah, and formed. Yeah. Yes, no, yeah. I'm the worst. I'm I, 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 I still got people out there. Okay, that I, okay. Have to, I respect that. Know. All right. 
So this is a um, mm, little change of a topic here. Uh, this is a, a personal, I like to bring up things that happen personally so I can get like some feedback on it. Um, one of the girls in my, I'm in like this mixed race group on the internet. And one of the girls was like, guys, I don't know. This is kind of a weird thing. And it was an ad. It was from Amazon and it was for a swim cap. <laughs> and it had a, you know, like a frequently asked questions, the FAQ section. And one of the questions was, is my hair too long for this swim cap? And then the answers, one says normal straight hair. Oh, geez. oh. Lower back will fit. Okay. Thick curly hair, mid back will fit. It's giving you the size. Then it says dreadlocks, mid back will fit. Afro. Good for you. We don't know too many swimmers with afros, <gasps> so we can say for sure. <gasps> wow. So that was the part that bothered her. She was like, the afro part made me feel weird. And then everyone else was like, what about normal, normal. straight hair? Both of them, yeah. And so we all were like, and so I, I reacted <laughs> to it. Uh, what? Uh, you know, afro, good for you. And I just felt like, what? Well, we don't know. Anyway, so do you? What? How does that make you feel, guys? Uh, separate and not so equal. Mm. Um, the good hair and the bad hair, the light skin, the light green eyes. I mean, that all it's of that. Two thousand seventeen, and we're still and we're still talking about this. Mm -hmm. And to say that straight hair is the good hair, and the curly, nappy hair, Afro hair is the bad hair, is disrespectful, and I'm really pissed off. Yeah. yeah, so it's Olympian Athletics okay. on Amazon, if you want to look at it. I just thought it was, I was really surprised by it wow. also. And then I also, then I was like, well, people are like, is it a joke? Is it, you know, and it's this idea of these jokes not being well, funny. Well, and here's, the, here's yeah. the thing. Now that you're saying it out loud, I find that I'm not actually surprised. I, I find that actually it's offensive. But part of the phenomenon is that it's so taken for granted that people just say it mm -hmm. and don't even think about it and aren't even saying like, oops, did right. I say that yeah. out, out, out loud? You know, it's sort yeah. of normalizing racism yes. and not going, hmm, how might this come across? Like, I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be offensive. Not even having that conversation mm -hmm. in any decision making boardroom. Like to just right. say shit like that. Mm -hmm. Well, and we had a pretty big incident here this week where a joke was not a good joke, it's right? Not, not funny at all. And um, so, does anybody want to? Okay, I broke the story, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're breaking the code talkers. <laughs> and now we're going to break this. No, I really did. So um, we have a local artist here in Denver, Kid Astronaut, who is going to be on an upcoming episode. And I was on Twitter, and I saw someone had sent the first person who tweet, tweeted it and the picture at Ink Coffee that mm -hmm. had... Here in Denver. Here in, in Denver. Five yeah, yep. in Five Points. That had a message on it, on their sandwich board, that said, happily gentrifying the neighborhood since 2014. Mm -hmm. And I their saw Their branded it. sandwich board, too. This was not a chalkboard. This was... They spent yeah. money on a branded... Yes. It was mm -hmm. colors, fonts. Yeah, they paid for and that. Yeah. They invested We in later that. learned that it originated with an ad firm that they had hired. To do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of questionable things happening there. But when I saw it, I was like, this isn't real. I right. was all fake news. That's right. how I felt when I saw it. And then the kid astronaut looked at it and he was like, oh, man, I'm going to go down there and kick it over. Right? That's what he said. And I was like, ooh, go do it. And I did <laughs> <laughs> But he went down there and then he did. He tweeted and he's like, I'm here and it's already gone. Uh. So um, it was just, I just couldn't believe yeah. that some someone could be so tone deaf to have something like that to say happily gentrifying. So again, it's like this idea of like this, you got an Afro. We don't know a lot of swimmers with Afro is these, these. Right. Just saying it like it's normal to be mm -hmm. racist and insensitive. Mm -hmm. Like how, when did, when did that tipping point happen? But speaking of tipping point, this is a tipping point. I thank that coffee shop. Mm -hmm. I thank them 
again, for revealing the reality right. that we live in. Because so many times you hear people in the neighborhood go, you're, you're just a little sensitive about that. Oh, get over it. We had an election. Oh, don't think of it that way. Really? Now it's right there in black and white and orange. And you see what is happening. And what this has done is gotten people out off of their couches, off of their phones, mm -hmm. off of their computers, outside of their BMWs, outside of their Chevys, and come together and said, okay, we've had enough. There it is in black and white and orange, and we are going to galvanize, organize, and do something about it. So, yeah, I thank that coffee shop. And for on the Saturday, this is something, so I hate to say this, but this is something I've been waiting for in Denver for many years now. So on Saturday, it was black people and brown people and mm -hmm. red people and white people all together in the same spot talking about the same thing. And I do regret that it takes something like this, mm -hmm. but it actually was pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. To, to see. And young people and old people, yeah. just all the intersectionality, all the different dimensions. I'm like, I just even had to stand back and just look. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? Hopefully we can keep this going where we're working together on each other's issues. Yes, don't let that perfect storm that came together on that bright, beautiful autumn day. I mean, what was that? It was November a perfect 25th day, too. Or yeah. We yes. could have been three feet in snow. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was beautiful weather, so nobody had any excuse about being cold. So we yeah. came out. Let's not lose that momentum and get comfortable and satisfied again and get start getting lazy and not stay woke and let it just happen and happen again because what we don't already see developed has already there's papers have already been signed yeah so what the what we need to do is be out there and be in people's faces call up our representatives not just on the city and state level but throughout mm -hmm. the, the, the nation but gentrification mm -hmm. right that's the that's a topic that I would like to talk a little bit about if mm -hmm. that's okay. I think yeah, so. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So, do it. so yeah. while we're here, one mm -hmm. of the things though that I kind of wanted to to start with was I wanted to read a quote. <clears throat> do you think? <laughs> if you're ready for it, this is from um, the late great Jane Jacobs. She was an urban planner. She wrote a book called The Death and Life of Great American Cities. She's also my great aunt, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of there is a lot of connection with her her name and gentrification because she saved Greenwich Village. There's a whole thing. Google her. She's fantastic. But this is a, a, one of my favorite quotes from her. Cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and only when they are created by everybody. Mm -hmm. Amen. And she just, you know, that was her, her whole thing. She changed, you know, urban development uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's amazing, but what she did was they were going to... Robert Moses, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, no, the old power broker. You know, mm -hmm. he was trying to put a highway through Greenwich Village, if you've been to New York, Washington oh, Square yes. Park. I know the story. Would yes. not be yes, there yes, yes. were it not for my great aunt. Wow. And so she was just... She was not formally educated, you know, and she stood up to him and rallied and did all these amazing things and, you know, and, and all of that. But... That's why Greenwich Village looks like it looks today. And it, but it's also was her idea. The idea was to take neighborhoods, cities, and, and reuse the space. And, and you don't need to wipe everything clean and put a new development. You can come. You can develop. You can quote unquote improve. But it doesn't have to be at the expense of the people and yes, the culture and right. the history exactly. that was already there. You can also yeah. preserve that and, you know, trust that. And all of that at the same time. Right. But I think people want to make maximum yeah. profit. I'm like, hey, yes. I'm American. I understand the idea of making profit. Right. So I don't begrudge that. But this whole maximum Yeah, right. Without profit. any kind of responsibility. Well, and that's what yeah. she yeah. said. She yeah. was like, the gentrification, there's like hardly any, because no one was using that word in like 1960s. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't what they called mm -hmm. it. She called it unslumming. <laughs> uh -huh. well, but, but I love was, that. But it was because she, you know, and she, just the, the liveliness of it, that you can have a little bit of gentrification. Basically is what she was saying is a little bit is, is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot is not. And then she has another quote and it was, it was, um, when the place gets too, when a place becomes too boring, a neighborhood becomes too boring, even the rich people will leave. Wow. Hmm. And wow. 
that's when it's it's no it's no good anymore when right. we go down the street, right? And those are things like do we want to see a Starbucks on every corner? Right. Do we want to see that? No, Something we want our own thing. Part of my frustrations, and you'll hear me say this over and over again, is that we keep acting like these new efforts are new. Right. You know? And so I think I I haven't decided yet, but I think I am committed to uh invoking a white mainstream concept in terms of using my words. And I'm going to start using words like colonization. That's it. Because we keep getting colonized. And I'm going to start using the word, like like that ink coffee thing, it reminds me of like manifest destiny. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like people feel like we have discovered five points. Yep. You know, and now it is our destiny mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and our right to like yeah. just redo the whole thing mm-hmm. and wipe everything. And, and and the reason why I knew I was going here is because when you started talking about genocide, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm not fully going there. But, but to me, mm-hmm. it's, the, it's, yep. it's that same thing yeah. where people are coming in and they're going to wipe out the indigenous people. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. So somebody on Facebook said, well, you know, f- uh, Five Points was in serious need of, of some help. So really, the people there should be ha- happy that this happened. Really? So investing in a neighborhood means um, colonizing? Mm-hmm. No, you can invest in a community and, and yes. infuse new money different ideas, but have a foundation of culture. Well, and that's part of the the development and the planning and what you're saying is like we have to keep being yeah. active yep. is because, because yeah, those contracts are already signed, yeah. right? But it's, it's, it's something though where we can, we need a voice in the, in the planning. Well, mm-hmm. what's so sad is we were supposed to have a voice, right? We have the president of the city council. We have an African-American mayor. We have elected officials of color. I thought we had a voice. But as I'm listening to those voices today, I'm disappointed is the nicest word that I can use to describe that. Because even today, and I was there this morning, and Albus Brooks is trying to brag about the contributions that he's made to this process. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so what did you do? He said, well, you know, before, if it wasn't for me, um, we wouldn't have a set aside for affordable housing as part of this development. I'm like, oh, so what's the set aside? He's like 10%. I'm like, come on, man. 10% is like nothing. It's like you know, 600 what you're houses. It's, that's what he said. And he yeah. used that as an example. He mm-hmm. said that's 600 people. And yeah, that's great that, for 600 that people. Good. But come on. We right. have like this... We have thousands of people yeah. who are being displaced, and he's like got his hands in his lapel. You know, we were supposed to have a voice, yeah. and if our elected officials of color won't even pretend to represent some of our interests, you know, I, Maybe I we think we need we're, some new elected I, I think, representatives. I, I think so. And here's a here's a thing that I think is coming that people. This is what I'm hearing, and people don't know yet. And we talked about this a little bit on the last show. African American people don't always like to call out other African Americans mm-hmm. in mixed company mm-hmm. because you know now we're airing our laundry and this that and other. But you know, I'm hearing people are like, you know what? Mm-hmm. You getting ready to get called out, and we've got names and concepts yeah. for this kind of stuff. I mean, even today, Tay Anderson is like calling that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Look, you know, I, I hear sometimes from elected officials, well, wh- how are you being engaged? I'm sorry. I'm in Africa reporting about genocide <laughs> and crimes against humanity. And when I'm here, I do the best I can. Mm-hmm. But that's why we have people who I thought represented our yes. best interest. Do you think it's even possible, though, for these politicians? Like, is it even possible for them to really... Like, I feel like they start out with these ideals, and I think that's why a lot of people get into politics and policy and wanting to make a difference, and then their, like, hands are tied by X, Y, Z. I mean, to a certain degree, they are. I mean, it's like saying, why didn't President Obama do more to get me a better job? Whatever. What have you done for yourself lately? That's another conversation. But, yes, there are there's checks and balances, and they can only do so much. But just keeping it in the the local 
level, local uh, politics, where all politics is local, Mm -hmm. you know, your hands aren't tied like they are in Congress or in the Senate. So I don't really buy that too much. Okay. And I'm sorry, if you don't know who you are, if your mama, your papa didn't tell you who you were before you got out on the street, then you need to come back home, figure out who you are and what Mm -hmm. you stand for and walk the talk. Otherwise, you're going to be pulled every way direction that Mm. the wind is blowing. Right. Mm -hmm. Elected officials know who's voting and where. And if we don't bother to vote... That can be a challenge. If we don't come to meetings and either share our opinions or support whatever we believe in, that's also a problem for those people who are elected. But at the end of the day, I say, we used to have this concept called leadership Mm -hmm. where people would stand up for two or three things that were just right. And you know on those two or three things, they they had your back. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that. I'm looking in people's eyes and I'm like, come on. I know you know this stuff. And you're coming up with, you know, I'm doing 10%. Like, come on, man. Some of us can actually count. (laughs) And let me say something more about, you know, we're talking about elected officials. Let's be clear, too. There are a lot of other people in just the city, not to mention the state level. I had the honor of working for then Mayor Hickenlooper as an appointee Mm -hmm. and working in neighborhoods and being a policy advisor on that. And one of uh, two um, other big important uh, departments um, is it uh, is basically the city planning. Mm -hmm. So that's who distributes and allows uh, zoning and permitting. So we can say Michael Hancock and Albus and Mm -hmm. Chris. But it's a system. But it Mm -hmm. is a system. And there are individuals who are just as powerful, if not even more powerful, because, because they they're not the under work. the scrutiny. Yeah. They're, they're doing the work, <laughs> and they're not under the scrutiny of the public. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to be making sure that there's some of us in those positions oh. mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. They're the ones who sign off on the permits. They're the ones who we have to stand in line and say, here is my information. I've got all my ducks in a row. Rather than saying, you're missing one thing, come back and see me in two months, saying, I'll hold this for you. Come back when you've got it, and you can you can you can I be here. Like you know that. what I'm saying. Yeah. So there there are uh, many other places that we can be without being elected. In fact, really, when you think about the real, we need power, to start working on that. See, it's not just having that pump. We need mm-hmm. to we mm-hmm. need to be telling people that is such a great point um, because I'm often thinking of like, oh well, you should run for office or you should do this that. You know what? You're right. Like we need. Yeah, there's a lot of powerful positions that don't have anything to do with running a campaign, but have everything to do with leveraging power and voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do it. I would like to get into that. Yeah. Well, I wanted yeah. to ask James about um, what he feels about gentrification. Because you represent all white people. James <laughs> speaks. James speaks for white people. <laughs> And I and I appreciate that about him. And um, <laughs> and uh, James also um, is like the only white family on his block. I think. Oh, hmm. uh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I guess we might be. I don't know if we're the only, but uh, although we're his wife is a Puerto Rican there. Jew, so that's a yeah, little so <laughs> of, by the set. But we got a couple of. Blonde, blue-eyed kids running around, so it's uh, at least optically. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's another. That's a podcast, right? Yeah. There. Right. I, mean, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> Dr. Diggs and I were talking a little bit about. I, I've been asking myself, why did the ink thing catch fire mm-hmm. the uh-huh. way that it did nationwide? Because it's. I mean, it's one story out of a billion. It's. It's so interesting to me. I mean, it's a top ten story in the New York Times mm-hmm. nationwide. Um, And I think that it has something to do with, in our society, gentrification, capitalism, all of it, we are made to feel like it's some force of nature that you're, um, even when the politicians say to you, oh, well, what are you doing about blah, 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 they make it sound like it's like piling sandbags for a natural disaster or something, like as if it's not an intentional structured system undergirded by law. And I think the ink thing pissed people off because that veil kind of came down and it was a gentrifier acknowledging, I know that this is my role in the community and I think it's cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that just like infuriated people because I think people can get by 
on the feeling, because we all have this, you, to a certain degree, yeah, you move where you can afford. I moved in a, into a house I could afford. But do the gentrifiers do that? I, yes. Well, how are we defining the gentrifiers? Yeah. I mean, that's... So, the, well, okay, so touche. I mean, because I so, am a gentrifier So here's what I will say. But do the developers and the, and the business on, owners do that? Because I don't get the sense that the owners or even the staff of Ink Coffee... Oh, that they live in the that neighborhood? they live in the neighborhood. That's an interesting question. I couldn't say for a fact, but well, certainly I Certainly the owners don't. It's you know, an Aspen. That's an Aspen. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so, I mean, that was the tone deaf reading I was getting is that mm-hmm. it's not only that they didn't realize, but they clearly aren't plugged into like anything because they could have yeah. asked like anybody. So I'm pretty sure they're not from the neighborhood because sure. you would have had to live under a rock to not understand how... And to your point about why now, the question why now, Mm -hmm. that was, again, in writing, there was no, oh, we we just read that incorrectly, or oh, you misunderstood something. No, it was in writing. And again, in branded... Black they had meetings orange. about this. Yeah. They had plans this, about yeah, this. Yeah. Well, and they ex- approved yeah. this. And his explanation is, oh, well, I didn't fully understand the issue of gentrification. And I think that maybe the, the reason for the response and the reason why the response is not going away mm-hmm. is because people are like, no, actually, you did. You did. Right. Thank you. And we know you did. Right. And yes. you expressed it. The, yes. What you... The way you fucked up you was do, that you, you said it out loud. Exactly. You yes. used the concept. Right. Yes. You know? <laughs> the way you fucked you up, like, you said it out loud. Gentrification and just... proud. You know? Yeah. The, the, the concept that he didn't know what he was talking There's about. There's no way. Yeah. It's so knowing. It's so... It, you could only make that statement if you really knew. If you really got it. Let me tell you a secret. It's not even a secret. But you know, I walk in white mainstream society. When you are investing money and you make a plan to you to do something or to use a term, first thing you do is look that shit up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially if you're going to spend, oh, I don't know, a couple thousand, three thousand yeah, dollars on that sign. That's a, yeah. that's a nice sign. You that's look a well built that sign. There's no way yeah. you don't. Yeah. Or you at least look around and go, huh, there's a whole bunch of black and brown people up here. Right. Right. So you know. So, uh, so, so those feeble you didn't explanations, care. you know. It's hurtful. It's know. so hurtful. We got to take a break, you guys. Okay. We got to take All a right. break. Hey. What's up? <laughs> Are you finally ready to build your brand? I think so. Well, Gabby's World Media is there to bring out the best in you. Tell me more. Well, from social media friendly video content to photography and media relations, Gabby's World Media has you covered. So go to gabbysworldmedia.com to get your name out there. Remember, it's not who you know, mm. it's who knows you. Mm. Gabby's World Media. I have a question though. What do you think Inc. could do? Is there anything they can do to redeem themselves at this point? Mm. Oh, sure. I think there's a a number of things and and I'll sort of throw out my ideas in a moment, but but to skip ahead to that is that when a company then does do the right thing, mm-hmm. then we have to give them another chance. Otherwise, what's the incentive right. to try to do anything right? And I was thinking about this um, yesterday morning on my run. I thought, what could they do? If I were advising them, I would say, you know, bring people to the coffee table. Yes. Have a conversation. And you know what? It's not going to be pretty. It's going to get ugly. There might be screaming. There might be some tears. There might be some, you don't get it. No, you don't get it. It might be all that ugliness. But let's start having the conversation with people. But none of us at this table have a, have an understanding of every single perspective no, in the world. No. But what we do when we run our companies and our organizations and we, we're trying to do some things and we, we diversify, right? Yes. We try to get other yes. opinions out to the table and we're and we admit that we made a mistake and don't give me some right. bullshit. And apology. we take the time because I think it takes a long time to do certain things that I would recommend that folks who are gentrified do anyway. And that is, you know, I think it's fine, again, 
to come in and invest in community. And even if you have an attitude that you're going to make improvements in the community, but it shouldn't be in terms of this um, symbolic genocide. And we've discovered. You know, you know we've discovered, yeah, we've something. discovered and yeah. now we're yeah. just going to do. I think you do things that take time, like you find out who what the churches are. There are Latino churches and African-American churches. You, you find out, you, you go around to the schools, um, and the schools have young people. And if you have a whites-only staff, you might, once you build a relationship with schools, say during the summer, you know what, can you send us three or four students from your school and we will have them be interns and show them the work. There are investments in the community that don't all have to be financial That's investments, right. mm-hmm. although I'm for financial yep. mm-hmm. investments mm-hmm. too because you're getting ready to make a lot of profit. But it's how do you demonstrate that you're going to spend the time, mm-hmm. if you're out from outside of the community, to get to know the community that you're going to be working in, you know. Um, Having partnerships with the Urban Peak the, or urban, other, the Denver uh, Rescue Mission, what are some things that you can bring people absolutely. To, into your space and, and even you with go business, out to those spaces? Even with business, there is a Black Chamber of Commerce. That's right. There yeah. is a Latino Chamber of Commerce, okay? And... And I'm not saying any one of those approaches or the other are the thing, but if you can demonstrate that you are trying to connect and learn and be part of the community, you know, that's... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you have a long-term and you will get em- And you will get embraced. Yeah. This, this is one thing about my experience with people of color. We are a forgiving people. Mm. We've we got a whole culture around, don't get me started, about redemption. Okay, we got a whole we got a whole thing. You can if you play that fiddle right, we'd be like, oh, you know, oh yeah. Remember when you did this? Yeah, we were on you this and that. But oh, you all right now? You all right Right. now? But you got to spend the time. You got to spend the time. Yep. To show that you are paying attention, that you care, and it's a long term (laughs) plan. It's not. It's not a plan for a month, a week, or even a year. Yeah. This is this is walking the talk. But you can't just occupy. Mm-hmm. You can't just occupy. You know, um, I think when you come in, part of the task is to be a part of it, not to just wipe everything out. Yeah. So what can residents do? So, I mean, that's we've talked a bit about what Inc. could do, what the incoming businesses could do. But earlier we were talking about you know, okay, let's grab this moment and and hold on to this momentum. So let's say you're a resident. Either you're one of these people who's being pushed out of your neighborhood or you're a newcomer to a city like Denver and you care about this sort of thing. What can you do to hold that momentum? What would you do next week when this ink thing is is died down and no one's talking about it anymore? How can you grab onto it without just waiting for the next social media firestorm to come around? What can you do? Mm. Well, and I, you know, I, I live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, next Saturday, December 2nd, and I'm living in five points. What am I going to do? Am I just going to go for my run, get my coffee, hang out with my girls, go out with a date, hopefully? Um, Or am I going to actually do something? And to me, it feels like, did you say you have a date? (laughs) Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, mm, I feel like we can have a little conversation. Girl talk, right? <laughs> but but I don't think there's anything wrong with <laughs> with staying on uh, on social media if that's your space. We do live in Colorado. It's yeah. probably going to snow at some point. It's reaching out to people and still investing in the community. Still going to those coffee shops that are go- are doing the right thing. Still going to those mm-hmm. p- businesses that you want to spend your money at that are walking the talk. Yeah, but it's not just you know. There's going to be rally of the city and county building and building, or uh, the uh, at a coffee shop or whatever. And I may I would go, but some people may or may not go. But if I'm, I'm the go. person that doesn't go because I have a two year old. Well, son. right, yeah. and that's yeah. okay. And so but, I but often okay. don't go to things because I want to. But you know, I'll march out of the streets when you, I have to. But you might be but, more motivated if somebody called you and said, "Tomorrow yeah. we're going to do something to give you yeah. a little bit of time to get yeah. some things." Together, yeah. or maybe it's like uh, you know, getting a group of people to take care of the group of kids, and then most of the adults can go. But at least reaching out to you yeah. and saying, yeah. "Hey, yeah. probably can't be spur of the moment, Rebecca, but if we gave you twenty four yeah. hours, we know this is coming up, and if you know tomorrow and, morning or tomorrow." And another thing yeah. that I'm having to do is just unpack my vanity. 
Mm. And and so I've been driven because if I show up at something, I almost want to know the background. I want to do some homework. Mm. If I'm going to speak, I want to speak intelligently. So I do a whole lot of stuff before I like show up. But one of the things that I've started doing is I'm just showing up at other people's stuff. And you know what? I don't have to talk. Mm. I don't have to be like heard. I don't have to do. Sometimes we just got to start showing up for yeah. other people's stuff. That's right. Yes. You know. I do send Dr. Diggs frequently in my place. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I'm okay. Like, but that's like, another strategy. But that's like, another you strategy. You have to go because I can't well, go. But right we now. do that. And that's and that's yet <laughs> even another strategy. Is if you can't make it, mm-hmm. can you can you tap someone and say, Yeah, hey, do you have time to go to that? And that's and, and yeah. that's how like we, James we do. On Saturday. Yeah. James was there. Because I couldn't go. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, he wanted to go. Is that why I went? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh. Was. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know why you went? <laughs> well, that hurts something like that pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm bummed. <laughs> Ooh, inside oh, jokes man. on uh, oh, off right. color. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are, I think we're going to wrap it up a little bit here. I want to thank you again, Tamara, for coming to my beautiful basement and, <laughs> and joining us and imparting your knowledge and wisdom. And uh, thank yes. you for having and, me. And thank you for the work that you're doing. It's okay. important work. And I know it's hard. I don't know you that well, but for me, and I, I so I'm not going to put it on you, but it's emotional work for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. You it know, is emotional. Which work. makes it yeah. even. Extra. It's mm-hmm. it's like extra. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's not just doing it. It's like yeah, it's important. And you have to. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to make yeah. sure that we're surrounded with people who will support us, even if they're on the other side of the political spectrum. Mm-hmm. One of my best, 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 best friends is from the dark side, the mm-hmm. Republican side. But she would do anything for me. So we have to surround ourselves with people, yeah. and we can't. We can't get so beat up or so disgruntled and discouraged to say that we can't make a difference because really one person can make a difference with mm-hmm. a family, with a village of supporters. Yeah. So I thank you all for doing what you're doing here at this podcast and hosting this conversation. Thank you. Guys, you should Tamara Banks thank me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Wish. Oh, okay. We'll cut that out. Okay. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Okay. No, that's fantastic. Thank you, everyone. All right. Off Color is a presentation of Henderson Diggs Incorporated. Production, engineering, and theme music by me, James Meekham. The music you heard during the ad break was Drown by a band called Wake Up Electrified. You can hear their excellent album, Myron Byron, at wakeupelectrified.bandcamp.com. More info on Off Color can be found at offcolorpod.com, on Twitter and Facebook at Off Color Pod. Thanks for listening.